scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. The apostolic ministry Please pay attention. The apostolic ministry is a very dangerous ministry. Um, the apostolic ministry is the kind of ministry that when you understand the demands spiritually, um, it may not be as attractive as it looks in the physical. In the physical, the apostolic ministry looks very flamboyant because you get to operate in all the other ministerial offices. Prophetic, evangelical, pastoral, teacher. And so it's like they are usually stand-alone people. Then you get to flow mightily in the gifts of the Spirit. You command tremendous influence. And it beguiles many people to think that... Um, the apostolic ministry is just as easy as it looks. Believe me, believe me, when you understand the scope of carrying an apostolic and a prophetic anointing, you will run away from it. Hallelujah. Occasionally, you find out that the burden of the Spirit rests upon you. See, the apostolic ministry is such that you sacrifice your life literally. You don't just sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your life. God can interrupt your life and your activity any day and any time. Because he pours upon your spirit the burden that he's carrying for a season, for a people. And you must stay in the secret place until you are able to articulate what is communicating and to birth it properly and trust me birthing spiritual things are painful so you get to a point where you will have to choose whether or not you really want to carry this mantle that's why apostles and prophets in the bible were lonely people they were abnormal human beings they were controversial human beings their lives that's why many of them did not marry. Because I'm sure that God just said, look, let's, let's save women heart attack from the madness of these people. The, the mantle will change you. It literally will reconfigure you into something you may not want. You are like a puppet under the influence of an agency you cannot stop. That's why the Bible says the church was built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. You know how thick a foundation must be to carry any structure. Any structure at all. Hallelujah. And so, sometimes when you find out that I retreat like this away, it's not just to go and play around. It's an intense communication of the burden of the spirit. Brothers and sisters, let me submit to you. 
that if you want to do ministry God's way, you must not just love God, but you must stay on course at all times. He says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say. Because you cannot afford to speak to people um, the things that are not being truly communicated by the Spirit. There are people inside and outside. God draws them by himself so that they will hear the precepts of the Spirit. And by the grace of God, in every city and in every region, God will always raise apostolic and prophetic platforms to not only regulate the spiritual climate within that region, but to serve as the gatekeepers within that region. Hallelujah. They serve as the envoys, the communicators of divine truth. They serve as the, the ones with whom um, divine realities can be communicated. And so it is very, very important that we realize and appreciate it. Truly, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the apostolic ministry is a strong ministry. Forget, you can decide to do ministry men's way, right? But if you really want to carry the mantle and the grace of men like Smith Wigglesworth, William Seymour, if you want to become a continuation of this system of God's kingdom advancement, then you must stay. It will cost you. I've told us again and again, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are some things that are rewards. Listen, let me tell you. It is on account of this sacrifice that the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. It says he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not. It's not just because, you know, a lot of times men of God threaten people with curses. If you touch me, I will curse you. No. The Bible says, a curse, causeless, shall not stand. So it's not just making pronouncements. But that there is a way that certain vessels sacrifice their, not just their life, their lifetime, to carry certain communications of the Spirit for a generation. They may look strange, you may not understand However, they are often at the pivot of kingdom activities. And I say this so that we can appreciate the truths that we receive here and do not trivialize them. Don't just see Fridays or any other day as, okay, koinonia, let's come, worship team, and then the word comes, and then you pray, and then you exchange pleasantries. It's more than that. God is making you become something. And you have gone too far. Even if you live right now, it's like a virus. You have been infected. I lift my hands to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome Listen to what you are singing. I lift my hands to you. Awesome just the voices. 
Sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Ask the Lord to open your eyes tonight. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord revealed something to me and told me to share it with the body of Christ. And please, I want you to pay attention to this teaching tonight. And I want you to give us many people, especially the ministers of the gospel. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. A true apostolic ministry is not bounded by this geographical constraint. This is just a platform. But the message is to the body. Hallelujah. I've spent my life studying the moves of God. Studying revivals. I have studied almost every known revival in human history that is recorded or at least noticed. I have studied the Great Awakenings. I've studied the Azusa Street Revival. I've studied the revivals in the times of the generals. Right from Alexander Dewe, Maria Woodward Ita, Madame Gunion, the European revival with men like Smith Wigglesworth. Great women like Emmy Semple McPherson and several others. I have studied the revivals in Nigeria right from the time of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder to great apostolic voices like Apostle Babalola of Christ Apostolic Church to the holiness movement that was pioneered by great men like Pastor W.F. Kumui and several other people and then great men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa and then the spiritual renaissance that happened in the last 10 years. That was the last time a major move of the spirit happened 10 years ago. Not just pockets of revivals. The last major move of the Spirit. Ten years. And this is a ten year cycle. And another one is about to begin. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God, I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God, I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, oh. one more time. I lift my voice. You're the awesome God. Listen, in every major move of God, there are three things that have happened. Number one, open heavens a strange season where the heavens are unusually open dimensions of graces and possibilities that would not otherwise have been experienced by the people within that region there is an unusual open heavens manifesting in healings miracles 
civilization, industrialization, whatever it is. Number two, intense and heavy criticisms and persecutions. The move of God has always been characterized by intense, heavy, almost unbearable persecution. Number three, many, maybe not all, but many of the moves of God were cut short of their full spiritual potential. Many of the moves that you read, both in the Bible, we see men like Samson, who was appointed to be a judge. The full potential of the manifestation of his ministry did not find expression. Men like Moses, who was supposed to take the people out of Egypt, the land of bondage, into the land flowing with milk and honey. Something seemed to happen in the middle of those moves. And I have spent my life studying it because... The move of God that will return the Christ must be dealt with with precision, intelligence, and it must be finished to the latter. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, if you don't love God and the agenda of God, you will not find what I'm saying tonight interesting. If you are just a casual Christian wanting marriage, wanting a car, house, a good grade, and, and you just came because you are hungry, give me tea, give me bread. This will not concern you. But if you are one who is connected to the love and the agenda of God, this teaching tonight will resonate in your spirit. Many of you will not be able to sleep after this teaching tonight. Hallelujah. There are many reasons why Revivals start and there are many reasons why revivals stop abruptly. And if we do not identify some of these reasons, then we may not be able to completely live out the fullness of God's expectation. All over Nigeria as a case study, we see that there is an awakening, campuses, different non-denominational meetings, even churches that will otherwise not be open to certain dimensions of the spirit. The eldership may not be open, but there is a renaissance happening in the youth ministry. The youth and the children, something they themselves cannot explain. And in the midst of the persecutions and the rest, it's like a fire that cannot be quenched. Are we together now? This is very important. But more tragic is the reason why revivals end. Revivals end because of a very simple factor. And it's called the humanity. The humanity of men. The humanity. Please pay attention. The very fact that men are human. Is a big limitation to the sustenance of the move of God. Every revival, every spiritual pursuit that has gassed out happened because the humanity of men impeded the pace with which the spirit was going. Are we together? Now let me tell you something. When God begins to use you, pay attention. When God begins to use you, the devil will never come to attack you. He will only attack you before you are being used. But if he does not prevail, he will not come when the move starts. The move of the spirit and the gift of the spirit will be working in your life and hell will be quiet. Please watch this. You will continue building the churches building the cathedrals, healing the sick, doing mighty things, and hell will be silent. Sometimes you can be mistaken that it is just your faith 
that is flawlessly defeating the devil. Keep going. Satan is not a fool. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. But he is not a fool. Satan has an advantage of age. And that advantage of age has afforded him the opportunity to study mankind. Are we together now? Before our dispensation of humanity started, he was there. And he has studied the moves of God right from Bible and modern history. And he knows that there is one factor. It's called the humanity of men. The humanity of men. The fact that men are human and frail is something that if you do not understand and create a spiritual system that overcomes your humanity, you may never last in the move of God. I lift my hands to you. I sing this song because I woke up with it while I was just waiting upon the Lord. I, I started singing it from the realm of the spirit. You know there are songs, I told you that songs are like ladders in the spirit. There are times that songs represent what God is doing in a season. So you have to keep singing them until the essence of their strength is ministered to you. Then the song will stop ministering to you. Not that the song has lost its power. It has accomplished what it was sent to do. There are many songs that have come from this altar and we sing it for a few weeks and then it just dies down. It's an impartation. The songs help you rise to a dimension. I lift my hands to you, awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God. One more time. Lord, we lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God. When John was caught up in Revelations, chapter 4 and 5, he was before the throne room and he began to see four living creatures that were a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ. Because everything in the throne is a reflection of a dimension in God. Everything. From the elders, to the creatures, to the sea, right? To the rainbow, to the thunder. Everything is a reflection of the dimension of Christ. So when the Bible says his hair is as white as wool, it's a communication of his righteousness. When it says his eyes, is his face is like the brightness of the sun, and so on and so forth, right? But there are four living creatures that communicate to us the different dimensions of God that are resident in man. The first living creature that John reveals to us, and Ezekiel also shows us, right? And Daniel the prophet also sees that the first dimension is the face of a lion. The face of a lion reveals the dominion dimension of God. The fact that God is king. The fact that he is royalty. Incontestable with any king and any government. Please pay attention. The, the face of a lion reveals our dominion. It reveals the fact that we are kings and priests. According to Revelation 5 verse 10. It says we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign in the earth. So that dimension of God shows you that you cannot be under situations and circumstances. It lets you know that you are like him in the similitude of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Are we together now? When you catch that dimension... Then you have the consciousness of who you are in Christ. You have the consciousness that you will refuse to allow life situations to put you down. Are we together? 
the dimension of him being king. When he was born king, the wise men came and they offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the king. Hallelujah. Now, but when you come around that dimension alone, it has a consequence. And the consequence of camping around only that dimension is pride and arrogance. Having the revelation of your kingship and your dominion and who you are in Christ alone is not a balance. In one of the visions, the prophet saw the four faces in one body and then in another they were separate. Because they see in part and all of them prophesied according to the limit of their perceptions. Like when the Bible says the streets of heaven are made of gold. They are not made of gold. Gold was the best communication that his eyes could interpret. With. It's more than gold. It's not gold. Are we together now? Is God helping us? And so we see that pride is the natural consequence of camping around that dimension. And so you have arrogant people in the body of Christ. Right? You give them pure water, they throw it back at you and say, I'm a king. Kings don't take pure water. Get me Eva, cold one, in a tray. Serve me like a king. All of this childishness are manifestations of this exaggeration of one dimension. And God knows. So immediately, to balance it, the next face is the face of a calf. And a calf speaks of servanthood. And so you are reminded immediately that you are not only a king, but you are a servant. Are we together now? That servanthood dimension now comes to balance your revelation of you being a king. So that as you move around, I cannot do this, you will realize that the reason why you are giving dominion is to serve. Many people hate being called servants because our theology has taught us that sons and servants, servanthood is an insult to sonship. Go and read your Bible and you'll find out that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The ultimate proof that you are a son indeed is when you become a servant. It says, permit this mind to be in you. Philippians 2 from verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, although he was equal with God, a king, he did not consider it as a thing to be grasped. Then he reduced himself to become a servant, dying the death on the cross. So he says, let that mind be in you. That the moment God anoints you, you realize that that servanthood dimension must find expression in your life. There are many men who are not true servants, especially in the body of Christ. We have kings, Oga, but very few people are servants. That shepherd's heart, that servant heart, many men of God lack. They don't pray for their congregations. They cannot pay the price to serve. Jesus was teaching this dimension and he called the disciples and guarded his loins with a towel and got water. And told all of them, come, I want to wash your feet. In ancient times, because they didn't have means of transportation like us, they could use camels and the rest and then they could walk. So when you came into the house of a man, part of the respect is that their servants or other people would come to wash your feet to make it clean. Then you can get into the house. And Jesus said, I want to do it for you. That's why the disciples were amazed. They said, you can't do this, come on. We have seen you at the apex of your ministry. You are a king indeed. He said, don't worry. Peter said, no way, I won't allow you. Then he told them something. He said, if I, being Lord, has washed your feet, make sure you go and do the rest. It doesn't mean go and wash the feet of others. Take this ideology as you do ministry. That when you get to a point where you are king, remember you are servant too. Let me tell you something. The reason why many people never access certain dimensions of God is because that dimension is revealed and left for servants. One of it is the dimension of illumination and spiritual revelation. Until you become a servant, you will never have access to true light. The Bible says, Revelations 1 verse 1, it says the revelation of Jesus, which he gave unto his servant John. Right? He gave unto his servant John. 
in Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, when, when Moses was dead, hear God's testimony about him. He came and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Paul, the very one who taught us sonship and revelation of our dominion in Christ, calls himself, I, Paul, a bond servant. The word bond servant, there, for you to understand the concept of bond servanthood, you must understand what we call the concept of jubilee. In ancient time, jubilee was after seven Sabbaths. That means seven years, right? Once the Sabbath year is always the seventh year. And so after seven Sabbaths, 49 years, the 50th year is declared a season of jubilee. And certain activities happen in that season of jubilee. Are we together now? Yeah. In the season of jubilee, if you owed somebody or someone owed you, you release them. They go free. And then if you had servants and slaves that maybe you captured in the time of war, you would release them to go free. But watch this. If in the course of the slave's service to his master, the master treated him well and with love, on the day or in the year of jubilee, listen, when he now releases the servant to go, the servant will say, I'm free now, but I choose to return to you. Are you together now? I return not because you now captured me in war. I return willingly. And I want to continue serving you because you are a good master. And that way, the master will now pierce his ears and put earrings in it as a symbol that, look, I am not violating Jubilee. This guy had an opportunity to go, but he came and willingly gave himself because of love, not chains. It was in that similitude. He says, I, Paul, a bond servant. Meaning, I have a choice so, to pack up and say, God, I don't have any business with you. But the love of God has constrained me as though a man who is under chains. Are we together now? I, Paul, a bond servant. Paul rejoiced at the excellency of being called a bond servant than being called an apostle. I, Paul, a bond servant. A bond servant. At the end of his life, he looked and he said he was the least of all the apostles. That it was a privilege for him to have served. Is God speaking to us? Two dimensions. Now again, just like the first, there is a limitation too. When you stop and come around you just being a servant alone. Are, are you getting blessed already? When you stop around that dimension, the trouble is, you can get to a point where you can literally kill yourself. And so the next face gives you a balance. The face of a man. That's where your humanity comes into place. The third revelation that balances up servanthood is your humanity. There are times that people walk their lives out in a bid to pursue the agenda of the kingdom. People literally wear away their body. One man in modern history and modern revival who was a victim of that was the Welsh revival. Right? Um, what's his name? Many of you don't know them. Evan Roberts, thank you. Evan Roberts was a young man. He lived only a few years after the revival and he died. Because he got to a point where, like I'm sharing with you, the burden of the Welsh revival, I mean the city of Wales and all this place was catching fire. People would literally read about the, the revival on newspaper and then explosions of the gifts of the spirit, explosions of salvation and the rest. And he felt a need he was so tired, he was not sleeping, he was not resting, he paid little attention to his health. And he literally weared himself to death. The third dimension that we see in the throne room is the face of a man. And this is very important, especially for men of God. Because sometimes we are embarrassed to admit the fact that we are humans. Because we... We have taught a theology that absolutely lets us know that we love God and we fear God, which is correct. But then we are embarrassed to accept our humanity. 
and we wear ourselves out. There are men of God who are embarrassed to eat food. They don't eat where people are because they feel, if I eat, you would think I'm not fasting, I'm not a, a serious person. And people do all kinds of things. There are people who, who specifically work themselves to being lean intentionally. Not necessarily because he was fasting that made them so. It's like a pride because it looks like those who really carry the anointing are not fat. You say, watch A and B and C. Why will you be like this? We don't trust this anointing you carry. And so people literally strangle away their humanity in a bid to justify that they are spiritual. Jesus, your Savior, who was the Christ, got to a point in his life where when he went to funerals, he wept. When they told him, Lazarus, whom you love, is dead. He went and he had to break down. It never meant he was not God. Are we together? He broke down and wept. When John the Baptist, his cousin, was told that he had died, he retreated away from ministry and ran to a mountain just to go and mourn John. And when he went to mourn John, people just had he was passing. Let me tell you something. It's amazing the kinds of expectations that people have for you when you carry the anointing. They don't expect you to be human. Are we together now? Absolutely. So let it not be strange to you, men of God, when you find out that people's expectations, you can walk yourself to death. There are people who call maybe around 1 or 2 o'clock. And I pick and I'm like, ah. And I say, ah, apostle, you are sleeping. <laughs> now, I don't understand the meaning of that. But if I do, this is what it means. Come on now. I mean, I'm sleeping, you are sleeping too. Who is praying for who? <laughs> See that? And sometimes, as funny as it is, that statement embarrasses you. It looks like a sting to your 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 spiritual perception, the way that they have perceived you. And you feel, no, 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 no. I wasn't sleeping. I was just nodding my head around. I will soon read the Bible. Are we together now? The face of a man. There was a time on Sunday, Jesus was hungry. I'm sure after service, he was on his way and he just meandered into a field of corn. Ha! And the people saw him. And they were surprised. And then this and that and that, he had an encounter and then he ate corn and people were saying all kinds of things. There was a time that um, the prophet was hungry. Have you read that? Who was hungry? Say it again was as soon as he got to the woman the widow of Zarephath he said madam water not what is your problem madam service my humanity I'm dying I've trekked a long distance while she was coming he said please prepare bread for me quickly and the woman said Abba man of God be, be fair on me you are a prophet don't you have the eyes to see what happened to your eyes There was a time, the family of a prophet, they were about to carry the children as collateral. Is it in your Bible? There was a time, Elijah, the fiery prophet, was afraid, and a woman made him run. A man called down fire on soldiers, but ran away from a woman. He ran away to a point that God had to say, Elijah, why are you here? He said, Kai, God... Just follow me. I'm, I'm coming with a very powerful message. Are we together now? Humanity. Jesus, the Christ, almost aborted salvation willingly. Many of us do not know. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, limitations. Jesus was tempted like us in every way. One time, um, let me share with you something very humorous. Uh, I think we're, we're somewhere and a very pretty lady was passing and we're all looking. Me too, I was looking. Listen, when I was looking, 
I noticed, I won't tell you the person who, who was with me. He now tapped me and said, ah, apostle. <laughs> and I quietly, I was, not to mean, ah, man of God, what happened to your spiritual seriousness? Ah, no, 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 you are not supposed to be seeing this. You are supposed to be seeing men like trees. Hallelujah. Never forget that part of your construction of being like Christ in that design your humanity was not taken away. It was left there. Jesus at Gethsemane looked at the Father and for the first time he wanted to reject being the Word because the word means living logos, meaning a manifestation of the thoughts of a man. Anything Jesus was doing, that was what the father was thinking. Are you following me now? And for the first time, he wanted to do what God was not thinking. He said, Father, if it be thy will, Kai, let this cup, brothers and sisters, if it happened to Jesus, it will happen to you. I know that you won't receive this. You will hate me. You say he has come back now. I'm back. Are we together now? If it be possible, take this cup off me. But then he quickly remembered. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Here is my heart. My mind, Lord, is my, life. my everything, take it, it's yours alone. Sing it one more time. Here is my heart, my mind, Lord, is my life. my everything. Listen, the humanity of man is a very serious part of him. We overlook it, but this is the part that destroyed people in revivals. Let me quickly just round up the four living creatures and then we'll get into the crux of the matter. Sometimes, God brings the balance again. You can be so human. Listen, that if you allow your humanity to have a toll on you, it will cause the devil to wreck you and destroy your life because you will give excuses for everything and say, I am human. Are we together now? And so a pastor gets to a point where he's weak and weary and he starts sleeping around with everybody and if people are saying, he who does not have stone to have um, seen to cast the first stone. In 10 years, I slept with two ladies. Wouldn't you clap for me? Didn't I try? You know, we are human. And people say, it's true. It's true. That was what Jesus invoked to free the woman who was caught in adultery. He said, he who does not have sin. In other words, whoever among you here who wants to claim his humanity is not finding expression, cast the first stone. And the priests and the Pharisees remember the things they have done around the temple that people have seen. Just threw the stone went away. Then the final revelation is that you are divine. The face of the eagle. So when you get to a point where you are so human, sometimes it can bring weakness in you, inferiority in you, and it can let you see that this assignment is impossible. No, I can't do this. God, you are giving me a mandate to the nations. I'm, I'm only a child like Jeremiah. I'm only 21 years, I'm only 30 years, I'm only 40 years, I'm only 50 years, or I'm alone. And he told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. I'm aware that you are human. Or like Moses who said, Lord, I'm a stammerer. Stammerer, are you deaf? Have you not heard me pray to you? How long did it take you to get the words together? I'm a stammerer. And God said, who created the body? Do you not know that you are divine? 
you must get to a point where you realize that in spite of your humanity, you are divine. That gives you comfort. Hallelujah. Now back to revivals. So that you can appreciate the things that I'm saying. I showed you these four dimensions. Because every one of them represents the progressions of two revivals. It first starts with revelation and access. Possibilities. Before God begins to use you, he brings you to a point where you see that the nations are conquerable. Have you seen people like that? Oh my goodness. About to be used by God. Lord, I can take this city. Give me Zaria. Give me Nigeria. Give me Kaduna State. Give me the north. Give me the world. I can establish the church. Lord, you are revealing to me that my ministry will have 1,000 branches. I'm ready for it. That's the lion speaking. Because the lion is a bold animal. Are we together? The king of the jungle. Fearless. So you say, Lord, it doesn't matter. I will heal the sick. Let them criticize me. I will heal. Then God says, all right, thank you. This is all I want. The gates be opened. Then you become a calf. And then, by the time you are serving people, the very people you are serving begin to stab you. You start a church and somebody comes to collect the church from you. Ah, You were not told that that was part of the things you will meet in the journey. When the brothers, remember Joseph showed us this. He woke up and had a dream and said, I saw it. The sun, the moon, 11 stars were bowing down. And the father looked, he said, you mean even me will bow to you? Joseph said, are you joking? This is my destiny. But he did not know the progressions that will lead to that destiny. Are we together? Then his brother betrayed him. Before he would reconcile, they now sold him into slavery. Before he would settle on that one, a woman now comes. He was almost, I'm sure you would think that promotion was now coming for him, that they were making him, Potiphar was now liking him. Then, that thing that was supposed to be an advantage, one day he goes to Potiphar's house and meets a woman who looks at him, and that becomes the source of his trouble. His service and faithfulness to Potiphar got him into trouble. And then, to jail. Then he now interprets the dream to somebody who forgets about him for two years. Are we together now? And then he became human. He broke down. Listen, let me tell you the truth. And men of God, learn this. The moment you begin your journey of servanthood, realize that you are human. So when a revival starts, Satan will never strike when it is the lion that is moving. Keep moving. Oh, all of you come and see what God is doing. There is a move of God in this nation called Koinonia. Look what God is doing. Joshua Selman and everybody is happy. Then he begins to serve. Mm. Then a day comes, you look and say, is the only Ben God that will preach or pray? Then a day will come, you now look and say, what does it take to sit in front here? Then a day comes when you begin to go through fierce persecutions. Your church suddenly turns to you and says, we have noticed that there are some radical young people in this church who are not complying by the constitution of the church. And we are about to take a very decisive action. And you are wondering, that is me. And then you stand on stage and the preaching is all about you. There are people, some of you are sitting here looking at me. And these people are the ones who insult elders and they do all kinds of things. They pray in one language like that and so on and so forth. And, and then you are amazed. Your life becomes... First, you will, you will pretend you can take it. That's usually how we are. Ah, forget it. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's not today. Today she... <laughs> then you continue. The church starts. The ministry starts. Right? Or as a sister, the marriage does not come. Lord, I will keep serving you. Marriage or no marriage, what is a man's self? The devil does not come then. That's just a servant speaking. Wait until the human starts speaking. 
a day comes in your life, no matter who you are, you will have to stand face to face with your humanity. Servanthood reaches its end. And it says, I have tried. The Bible says, do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn. Because even it can be tired. Are we together now? It is at this point where your humanity comes in. The reality of the vicissitudes of life. You are serving God in ministry, but you just hear a news that somebody in your family died. And you are saying, what is, what is going on? As if that is not enough, you just hear that your elder sister's husband beat her and threw her out. And said, Lord, you are faithful. I will give you thanks in all things. The servant is still speaking. Satan never comes. It's like a spiritual meter. He keeps watching. And then a guy comes into your life and you are happy. You are saying, Lord, so finally, this is how you have planned it for me. Before your smile finishes, he just sent you a text and said, we went to pray. And honestly, they told me you are not the one. It's not like you are bad. It's just that you are not the one. You now add the balance of that pain on what has been there. And a day comes like Jesus, you will break down. Listen, people lie in church. That's why we don't access to those times are the times you go to pray and there are no words to say. You just keep moving up and down. It's not like you don't have prayer points. You don't even know what to say. You don't know if it's tongues. You will start or praise and worship. You play a song and off it back. The song that used to bless you is like it's irritating you. Hmm. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you gotten to that point in your life? Where as a man of God, you carry your Bible and you can't read it. It's not backsliding. You open it and you don't know what else to read. At that point, the devil is ready to come. When Jesus was fasting to prepare for ministry, Satan was just hanging around. He knew there was a time he would come. When Jesus was weak at the apex of his humanity, then Lucifer comes and says, Jesus, Jesus barely answered and said, Kai, but you said, Abba. How can you be killing yourself when it is within your power? Have you forgotten you are the word? If you have forgotten, let me remind you. Once my master, always my master. Let me remind you, Oga, you can turn stones to bread. Don't think Jesus just say, oh, God forbid. No, it's not true. It's not the way the Bible puts it. There are possibilities you may never consider until you are a human being. Are we together? You made a vow that you will never marry a married man as a second wife and a time comes when your humanity comes satan can come directly or through a friend and say see there's a way we do it it's not are you a fool there's a, you can you can plan this thing and for the first time in your life you will you will be shocked that you are considering that possibility you will rebuke yourself afterwards but at that point or the first time a married woman now looks at a young man of 21 and something rings in her that can't I have this boy as a sugar son? Since this stupid man is not, is not around. Now listen, those who do not understand spiritual growth will criticize those people and say, I'm, I'm disappointed. How about my mother? No. Humanity. Are we together? I've seen pastors who got to a point where they told them, look, you are suffering, no? If you want ministry to move, what is there to wash your eyes? Abba, you are behaving as if you are the only one. After all, the most important thing is your salvation. Are you not born again? Say, yes, I am. Let them wash. It's an addition. It's all, it's still God. No matter how it comes. But let me tell you, you get to that point. A man of God once called me and a prophet told him that he can help him and... and fix some things and there were certain flakes and leaves that he would bury around the church through story and he'll be fasting for seven days. He said at the seventh day 
even if a pin passes his, his over him, his eyes will see it. It's easy to talk when you have crowd. Wait until you walk with 12 people for 3 years. The devil will, he will come before. Then he will allow you. Have you seen people like that? You want to give them something, they refuse. God forbid, leave them. When they search around, no options. You now come and say, are you in any way interested in this? It has happened to ladies. A guy will ask them at 24, say me, you look at you. The guy will leave them. He will come back at 35 and say, I'm still around. Say, please, I don't know about... He said, I thought you said God. Say, say, forget, God has spoken again. The humanity of men is something that killed these revivals. Watch this. So when this revival is started, Satan tried to stop it. But when he found out that it was too late, he said, I'm coming back. Read your Bible. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. And he waited. At the apex, he now started bringing people into the meeting. And they started saying, look, the whole city is already taking this man. We are losing our ground here. Let's start coming up with something. And all of a sudden, Judah started looking at the treasury. And saying, me, I know what is there. I'm the one counting the money. Why are we not helping ourselves? The Bible says those who walk by the altar should live by the altar. What is all this one? I can't be holding money that I'm not spending. All those motions are Satan coming back. There was a time he entered Peter and spoke to Jesus. And Jesus looked and said, Kai, get thee behind me. And Satan said, you saw me. I'm coming back. This time around, he came in through Judas. That's what happened to Samson. Samson got to a point where he tore the lion. Satan said, leave him. Kill the lions. Continue. And then at the point where he needed a wife so desperately, a strange woman came called Delilah. Samson was helplessly under the influence of this woman till he lost his, his, um, his hair and his eyes. Catherine Kuhlman was a woman of power. This woman moved in dimensions of the spirit very few people in our generation have walked in. But the time came, she remembered that she was human. She wanted a man in her life, like every woman would. And her keyboardist. The people who would come to church and pray. Her humanity caught up with her. And her inability to manage that humanity aborted certain things. Alexander Doway got to a point where people exalted him. He was the spiritual mayor of his city. And then he got to that point and men said, look, there is no difference between you and Elijah. We can literally put the Bible and see that you are him. He first said, no, 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 all glory to God. After a while, he said, truly, but me too, let me talk to myself. I'm really Elijah. And he went and dressed in Elijah regalia. Are we together? William Branham, the uncommon prophet. A man whose eyes were like that of an eagle. He would be talking with you, a stranger, as if you have met. It's not just like word of knowledge. Okay, your head is this, um, your this is that, you have tenera in your wallet. No. I mean, he would be talking and say, Femi, um, how are you? How is Rema? This is how he talks. This is a stranger he has never seen. Say, so what's the other challenge in, in, in Rema? What, what is the problem? Uh, but have you considered discussing it with uh, your uncle, Ule? This is, this is a stranger. That's how William Branham operated. It's not lo just like he would give you a word of knowledge, then you will confirm. You don't have to confirm it. He's conversing with you. Yet he got to a point, a hollow was literally seen on his head when they snapped him. He operated in that dimension of grace. But he came to a point where his humanity started tampering with the divine revelations he was writing and he started writing certain teachings at the end of his life that became an error that even certain sects in the body of christ have not recovered from today satan comes to you at a point where servanthood has led you to see your humanity 
at that point where you are down, then he comes. He comes with suggestions. Very subtle yet forceful. He comes with all kinds of things. I say this not, not in criticism to the glory of God. The latest of this catastrophe that happened to the body of Christ happened this year. Right? I say it because it's something that is known. God TV. Rory and Wendy Alec. God TV is about maybe the second largest TV, Christian TV station after TBN. Is that true? TBN right now is almost, it's, it's, it's almost down. You know why? Because at the apex, when several things were happening, Crouch, um, 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 Jean Crouch, and then the other man, they are all dead now. At that point, the woman was struck with cancer. Bam! And it became an indictment in the ministry. Then all kinds of scandals started evolving. And before you know it, their humanity caught up with that reality. And right now, the ministry is where it is. God TV, Benny Hinn, at, as at the beginning of this year when they were buying a, up a property in Plymouth, right? Benny Hinn was there. Look at all the notable men of God that came around. They held different regional meetings. Great men like um, Matthew Ashimolo and the rest were there. While that was happening, the financial ministerial burden on the man was depressing him, his humanity. They needed millions of dollars within a short time to pay for that place. And it was depressing him. And in that depression, he started, you know, when people are humans, they become stupid. They do things you never believe can happen. And so he started having an affair with a woman outside of his wife. Very beautiful woman. See that? And then when the world was about to say, we see the revival that is coming. One day he got up in the place of work and told the world, I quit from God TV and left. Left the ministry till today. The great man of God, Benny Hinn, a figure that we know and we admire and love so much, about three years ago, was preparing to go for a crusade when he was almost collapsing. And people said, no, this is, this is terrible. I mean, this is a man, this is a healing evangelist. He went to the hospital. They had to give him magnesium shots and all of that. And shortly after that time, in February that year, preparing for another crusade, and a divorce letter comes. In less than 24 hours, about half of the partners in the ministry left. Benny Hinn, our great Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn was broken. Benny Hinn was broken, my wife. I have taught on integrity in marriage. We have grandchildren. When a grandmother leaves her husband, that's a serious issue. We have grandchildren. Couldn't you just endure? No, we are humans. I don't know if God is ministering to you tonight. One person that has overcome is Benny Hinn. I love him. He has shown the world in modern day that it is possible. When they were joining him and the wife I was watching, I followed it. And I looked at him. I said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, you have shown we the people coming that it is possible. A man can conquer the grip of humanity. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you, you're the awesome God. that fell, fell because Satan struck at the point where the people were humans. But they did not sustain the technology in the spirit. They didn't know. They knew how to receive power, but they, they, they did not know how to conquer this body. Paul said, I beat my body daily. 
Is it in your Bible? How many times? Daily. He said, let, let it not be that after having preached, I myself will be a castaway. Isaiah shows us the key. Chapter 40, please. Shiva For some of you, you will not need this message now. You will need it 10 years from now. You will look for this tape like the deer pants after the water. Verse 28, Isaiah 40 verse 28. Now you'll understand what the Bible was saying. Help us media. We'll read down to 31. Hallelujah. And so, he began to tell us. Watch this. Has thou not known? Question. He said, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, you know what everlasting means? No weakness. No backsliding. Every time the Bible begins to give God these qualities, is because he's trying to contrast him to the limitation of man. He says God is everlasting. There are no breakages, no rising and falling. He says the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Listen, the Bible says he what? Faints not. So the Bible is talking about fainting. Mm. This is not backsliding. This is the humanity of men. He's helping us and showing us a key that will keep us 30 years in ministry. And when all the dust settles, you are still standing. Are we together now? 30 years in life that people will not look at you and say, I remember promise. There was a time this guy carried fire. There was a time in Zaria or in Abuja. If you talked about promise, you were synonymous. But right now, He says he fainted not, neither is he what? Weary. Then he says there is no searching of his understanding. In other words, there is a system in him that makes that possible. And he's about to reveal it to us. But he says he giveth power to who? The thing. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. Everybody read if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Even the youth shall faint and be where he stop. Did he say may faint? The Bible says the glory of the young man is in his strength. But he said no matter how strong you are, if you are in this world, your humanity will catch up with you. He says the young men shall faint. A day will come your courage and your, or your audacity will come to a point where you do not even know what to believe again. Please go back, go back, 30. Just stay there. 30. It says, and the young men shall what? Mm. This is a prophet speaking. No? He's not just a messenger. He's a prophet. And then he says, this is a possibility that you can come to. In ministry, in life, as a student, it's easy to see five carryovers in 100 level and say, God is faithful. Your latter will be greater than your past. But by the time you are in your final year, final session, and you see two carryovers all second semester, you come, you come for koinonia by two o'clock, and you sit alone. When people are making noise around you, you, you just go outside. And people are saying, are you okay? Have you been in a situation where food becomes like a resentment? You don't even want to eat. You don't know whether you are hungry or not. You don't know what part of your body is paining you. Is it your head? Is it your hand? If somebody is talking to you, the voice of people literally is like noise. You want to be alone. This is the name of where you have gotten to. The realm of weariness. I heard of a great man of God in this country who 
because of depression a few years ago was almost committing suicide. And I can't mention his name, you know. But if I mention his name, some of you will be discouraged and say, I can't believe it. No, please tell me it's a joke. Literally, suicide. It was another man of God that called him and said, you can't do this. You can't do this. You have come too far. Hallelujah. The humanity of Judas caught up with him. He said there's no remedy. If he was only patient for two more days, salvation would be possible for him. If Judas was, was just patient for two more days, there was a possibility that with the resurrection of Jesus, he would be free. And the guy went. He didn't manage his humanity. He, hung, he bought a field with the money, hung himself, and died. God is ministering to people right now who you are at a point where your humanity is eating up with you. Your humanity. You are anointed, but you have not prayed for days. The truth is you don't even know what to say. The problems from home are overwhelming. Your father that you have been managing, you have been thinking that this man is improving. He has now done something stupid. There is an episode for the week he does. But the one for last week has discouraged you and you are saying, will I continue like this? From one bad news to another, when it keeps piling upon you, brothers and sisters, it will shit you bad. That's why the Bible says, in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, it says, they that know their God, the first thing that will happen to them is what? Strength. Strength. The first fruit, the first benefit of really, really knowing God is strength. Strength there means capacity. Capacity. That you stand through the storms of life. You stand through the challenges of your humanity. I'll never forget a man who was on his way to go for a program with his children. And they were on phone. And the next thing, the line just cut. And he thought it was just um, maybe network and all of that. And trying to call back, he just heard that somebody called and they told him, please, an accident just happened. All your kids dead. And he went and still preached. I mean your children, not spiritual children. Physical children. They died like chickens. Not that they have been sick for three years and you have expected that they may pass on and prepare for it. One moment you are talking with children who are happy and then a line goes off and then they tell you they are all dead. Not in coma, dead. Listen. If you are living in the world of today, you must be prepared. You must sustain capacity to absorb the shocks that life brings if you want to stand. Otherwise, a time will come. When you see people go to Habalis, it's because of their humanity. At the beginning of the sickness, they vowed they won't go to any Habalis. They won't go anywhere. But by the time the leg starts producing pus, and they said they are going to cut off everything, or by the time they say the cancer is spreading around the body, at that point, they'll say, look, there's somebody. Don't, don't kill. Don't. At that point, you won't know when you will enter a shrine with a goat. I say, please do whatever you will do. Your conscience is judging you, but your humanity is ignoring it. A time comes when a lady, because of her depression, just gives in to a man and says, sleep with me. Do whatever you want to do. I'm human. I can't stand this. I've endured for 11 years. Taking care of myself, this is too much. Please, if it will help me. Years ago, when we used to meet inside the campus, I shared a very touching story that made me, it, it, it did something to me. There was a woman who was walking through story with a man. And the, nobody in the family was walking. The father, everything. She was, the pay was too bad. And the family was at a point where they were choked financially. I mean to the core. And the woman went to the boss to plead that can he please give her a raise or promote her or give her extra jobs. And the man smiled at her. He had now gotten what he wanted because she was now vulnerable. And he told that woman, a married woman, he said, you know what you do. If you are ready to comply by the terms, I will promote you. She first refused. But when the financial burden pinned the family to a point that it was a matter of life and death,
people were sick, no money to take care of them. She discussed with her husband and said, you are my husband, at least I'm not cheating on you. It's with your consent. Can't I just sleep with this man? I know some of you will say, God forbid, keep quiet. You see some of our elderly ones here just keeping quiet, listening to me. Many young people say, God forbid. Don't say, God forbid. Until you are in a position that really pushes you to the wall. And the man gave her a consent. And she went and slept with the man. Truly, truly. He gave her a long sum of money. She was so frustrated afterwards, she left the job. Men have done things in our world because of the reality of their humanity. Their humanity has caught up with them. And their inability to sustain what I'm about to teach you. There are preachers right now who are broken and discouraged. They don't know what to believe again. They have preached every message they want to preach. There are people who have practiced all the laws of prosperity they know to practice. Nothing is working. They are at a point where they are frustrated. There are families right now trusting God for the fruit of the womb. They have done everything. They told the man to leave that one and get another wife. He said, no, I'll be faithful. But now it's seven years and the man has already given the woman a last warning. If by December you are not taken in, I will leave you. Please go and look for another man. Many things that you will not accept when pressure pushes you to the wall, you will look at them and consider them passionately. Then the Bible tells us, here's the formula, 31. Media help us, 40 verse 31. Awesome God, I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. But they that wait upon the Lord, it says they shall what? It didn't say they will hear him speak. They will renew their strength. It says they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Then they will run. And Satan is waiting for when they will be weary. But he will never find that place. 20 years they are not weary. He says don't worry. After 21 years they will be weary. 30 years they are still moving. Because like God they have caught the system. There are men who Satan has been waiting for when they will go down. And he has found out that days are turning to weeks. Weeks to months. Months to years. Years to decades. Because of this system. That those who wait upon the Lord, they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So although you are human, when you started the ministry, they said, leave him. When building projects starts, all your anointing and revelation will scatter. You will stand and you will preach John 3.16 and you will quote Revelation 1 verse 1. But then like play, they will see a building rising. Rising. And then they'll say, don't worry. By the time members start criticizing him, in the midst of it, you are still moving. You have sustained a key in the spirit. Are we together now? And the key is that they that wait. It's not just about fasting. It's a spiritual system that remedies for the encumbrances of your humanity. Since the Bible says for the fact that you are human, Weariness and fainting and falling is an inevitable possibility, humanly speaking. Then he gives you a strategy. He says, every time you start sensing that your humanity is dominating your spirituality, he says, wait upon the Lord. He didn't say, go to God and go and discuss. He just said, wait upon the Lord. For when you wait, among the many things that will happen, is that there will be a renewal of what? Strength. Proverbs chapter 14. I leave my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I leave my hands to you. You're an awesome 
14 verse 4. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Go ahead and read it everyone. One, two, read. It said, but much increase is by what? Of what? An ox. Listen. He said, much increase comes, not just by strength. He tries to use an animal that, he, that can help him communicate the level and the order of strength we must have to finish. An ox is a strange animal. It's a farm animal. It's a very, very, when, when you see an ox, really, ox is not a very nice animal. When you come close to it, it even smells. An ox has no business with his physical outlook. All an ox is concerned about is labor. The vision that is set before it. An ox literally can drive a cart or a farm, a farm um, object through the farm. Through mountains, valleys, it will still push it. It gets to a point where it hooks and you will see it breathing. Uh, 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 and you think it's about to finish and it will push it again and continue until it crosses over the mountain. And the Bible says if you must stand and finish strong you must sustain strength like an ox. That animal that communicates resilience that at the point where your humanity catches up with you like Job while you are crying with the boils, while you've lost everything you can say, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time, I know that there is whatever has a beginning has an end. If this issue has a beginning, it has an end. I sustain strength to continue. A time comes when it looks like members are leaving your church. Members are leaving your ministry. Ministry is not growing. You are praying for the sick. And it's as if the anointing does not seem to find expression. And this thing is destroying you. He says, by the strength of an ox. An ox is the animal that even if it cannot move forward, it doesn't go back again. It stands there until rescue comes to it. Very strong animal. Many Christians, many, many Christians, I have seen this thing. I've seen it like I'm seeing your face. That in, I'm talking of a few years, because of the unfolding of the culmination of this phase of the move of God and that which is starting, not many people will be able to stand the kinds of persecutions that will come in the church, will come on individuals. There are many men of God who will literally quit ministry. There are many women who will divorce their husbands because they are pastors and whatever. Because of financial hardship that comes upon people. I prophesied in 2007 about the recession that will start. People laughed at me. People criticized me. When it hit, I said I saw another one coming. That's not the only one coming. And brothers and sisters, when this tsunami hit, and the earth begins to burn like an oven. You will see compromises of all sorts. Men who would never have bribed will bribe. Ladies who will, who will say, me, I have to marry a man of, somebody who loves God, will now say, anyhow, please salvage us. There are many ministries that will go through seasons of shakings. There are many men of God Men of God who you had never had issues about. Men of God who were not even known for scandals. You will begin to hear things. Now, whether it's false or real is not the issue. Is that it is there. You will see great men, fathers of faith, who will, it's, it's almost like they are almost being brought on their knees. Some of them will be accused directly by governmental authorities. Some of them will be linked to corruption. I'm telling you this, write it down. Some of them will be linked as they are pointing out people who are corrupt.
they will link their churches and their membership to certain kinds of corruption. And the devil will orchestrate it such that they will be indicted in diverse ways. But it will take the strength of an ox. Some of their own members will write articles about them and destroy them and tear them down. Some of them will finally vent out their suspicions. But beyond this mountain of pain will come a move of the Spirit and the excellency of His glory upon the church in unprecedented dimensions and especially the church in Nigeria. Every church called upon by God will go through this season. I guarantee you. It's not something you will pray against. It's something you will receive strength. Listen, not every cup in the kingdom can be pushed away. There are certain cups you only receive grace to drink them. He said, I want to sit by your left and right. And he said, are you willing to be baptized with my baptism and to drink of my cup? This is a very scary teaching tonight. See the way people are quiet and say, why did I come for Koinonia today? He says, by the strength of an ox. I see this thing happening to men. Many men. I saw it in the visions of the Lord. Fathers who had been faithful for many years. Now started being unfaithful to their wives. That's what the Bible says. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of self. I saw a lot of pastors who got into drinking. Drinking and smoking. I saw pastors getting into drugs. And I said, my goodness. Not just drugs to satisfy themselves. Drug as business. Because the financial pressure of ministry was coming upon them. I saw people slaughtering babies. Babies. Even the young men will be weary. They will fall. You who used to love God, you had all kinds of ambitions. You have gathered people and said, God said we should start a church. You just gas out the sin and say, this thing, is it worth it? Is it not better for me? Is it not better for me to just sit quietly? There are times many of you will blame God for anointing you. You will literally blame God and say, Lord, I was minding my own business. What is all this one? Like Amos, I was just an ordinary farmer. You now came and called me, oh, I didn't tell you I wanted ministry. Strength. We are in the seasons where this will begin to happen. I saw a release of strange arsenals from hell. I saw them flooding into Nigeria like bees, like black bees, spreading. It's like they had been kept for a time as this. See, when when I tell you these things, I want you to know that my heart is heavy as I say it. I wish I didn't have to say it, but it's the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. So many things. Many believers will say, where is our God? Many people whose Christianity is not founded on love for God will leave God. They will leave God in, in unbelievable ways. They will turn their backs directly on God. Brothers and sisters, when you begin to see this, it has already started happening for many of you. There are three phases that this will happen. In. Number one is individuals. Number two is maybe churches or groups or territories. And then number three, nations and continents. We will see this thing. Is the birth pain of a new revival. It's like a woman who is in a labor room. Never allow the assignments of hell to prevail over you. Please hear me. I speak to you prophetically. Those seasons will come in your life. Believe me. You will thank me for this when the seasons come. It will look like everything you have believed is under fire. It will look like everything you have read about is a lie. Some of you will stand and almost feel like committing suicide. It's already happening to some of you. I want you to know that there are birth pains of a new dimension. 
and it is not a time to give up. Do not let your humanity swallow you for just beyond it. Joseph was almost giving up and by the next day he was the prime minister. God is counting on us for strength. God is counting on us. Many of you will walk alone. Listen, some of you who are used to group endorsements, oh, endorse me. For some of you, it will be a lonely road. Believe me, you will walk alone. Some of you, your parents will look at you and insult you. They will say you are good for nothing. You are, you are a disgrace to me. I gave birth to you. Look at what other children are doing. The more you claim you are spiritual, the more you are failing in life. I'm ashamed of you. And you will walk in that lonely path. You will discuss things with your friends that they will use against you. And stab you to your back and say, I did it. At that point, you will almost not want to trust anybody again. But I'm telling you this. Sustain capacity in the spirit. Those days will come. They are here already. I have seen them. Satan is out on a mission to discredit ministries and men of God. I, I saw like it was like bees that were released, like a swamp of bees. You will not imagine the levels of discrediting that Satan wants to bring to ministries. Why? So that their voice will no longer be heard. And then the people will be depraved. The Bible says, in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was cast. That's what Satan wants. That there be no abundance of the word again. Listen, I want you to know that your spiritual life is annoying the gates of hell. Don't you think your prayers in the night is a welcome development to hell? They want to ravage your family. But every time they want to step in, there is a voice that cries at the gates of heaven in the night. When God wants to make it look like every prophet is fake, there are already prophetic people that God is raising and Satan has spotted them. He has seen it. He tried to destroy your, your preparation. But since you did, not, you did not stop, then he will now begin to move in strange ways. He says, by the strength of an ox. Listen, I tell you this. Churches will be scandalized in mysterious ways. Men of God will fall victims of women in mysterious ways. That's why I talk to some of us who are jealous over women. Be careful. Don't just laugh around and, and say anything goes. Be careful. It's good to be social. But the Bible says, be wise as serpents. He said, but be gentle as camels. Those who speak anyhow, carelessly talking anyhow, there are men of God that run their mouth anyhow. Don't give Satan an arsenal to strike you. But I see this thing happening. I see it happening. It's like an angel of death that is passing over. And only those who are immune will stand. I bring you this word from the throne. This is a word to the body of Christ. When the Lord showed me this, I said, my goodness. But beyond it, brothers and sisters, I saw an emergence of strange glory. Listen. I saw people coming out with tears in their eyes, but heavy levels of unction. Mm. I saw women coming a lot of people, some with bruises on their body like blood. But I saw again, they were holding mantles. Like a cloak. Mantles. I saw others who had already crossed over. But they told people to hold their mantles and they went back into the fire to help other people. They had come out, but willingly they left it. I saw this happen. I saw families turn away from people. Families turn away from their children. I saw children turn away from people. I said, what is happening? Is the manifestation of these spirits. Is the birth pain of a revival. Everything that can be used 
against you will be used. Everything. Everything that can be used against you will be used. The gates of hell will release his arsenals everywhere. There are certain things you cannot stop, but you must build momentum. The Bible says, and the rains came, and the wind blew, but the house that was built on the rock stood. I lift my hands to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. One more time, sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands. Hear me, when these seasons come, strength and capacity is what will take men through. There are times you may not be able to pray, but make sure you stay. There are times you can't explain to anybody, make sure you stay. When your ego is torn to the core, when all you have held leaves you, stand. Haven't done all to stand. He says, stand. 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 When your gift and the ability of the Spirit upon your life is no longer appreciated, stand. When your loved ones who used to believe in you now turn and say, look, we even doubt if you are anointed. Stand. 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 Hear the voice of the spirit tonight. Stand. Haven't done all to stand. 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 It will cost you. You will have scars. But stand. He's the awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. He's the awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. You are the awesome God. This is how the miracle working power will come to the church. This is how signs and wonders will be restored to the body. This is how the prophetic will be restored. Will be restored. This is the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry. The capacity to stand. Stand. You will listen to this message a thousand times. I promise you. I say it to go ahead of you. A day will come. No other message will minister to you. You will hear this voice speaking in your dreams. You will hear it speaking in your visions. When you are about to give, give up, you will hear stand. Mm. Stand. 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 He said, fear not. Isaiah 43. I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. It says, when you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. You want grace? This is the way it comes. You want power? I'm not just talking of trying to say, I'm anointed. No. He said, let no man trouble me. I went through it. There is a scar. Brothers and sisters, not every man speaks and heaven begins to back them like this. There are scars. Preachers lie to you. They tell you there are no scars. But 
But I want you to hear this voice from the throne. It takes cars to command power in the spirit. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. The faithful God. You're the faithful God. Mighty God is a mighty God, mighty God, glorious God. Hey, hey. You're the glorious God, glorious God. We lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. We lift our hands. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Hallelujah. There are rankings and there are promotions in the spirit. Hear me. When a man enters a new level of grace, you know. When a man touches a substance that is heavenly, you know, God is elevating men through these persecutions. But it's not going to come the way you expect. It won't come by clapping for you. No! Your voice becomes like the voice of thunder. When you have gained power in the heavens. Is the awesome God. Awesome God. You are the awesome God. Hey, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Hey, I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands. Awesome God. Hallelujah. Though weeping endures for a night, it says joy. Though weeping endures for a night, joy. With the morning, it will look like morning will not come. Stand in the fire. Stand in the heat. Stand through the persecution. Stand through the pain. Stand is the betting of the anointing is the betting of power is the betting of glory for out of the shadows of your pain his glory will arise out of your tears an unction will come upon your life out of your discouragement out of your humanity he that endures to the end. You may not be able to sing, but stand. You may not be able to cry, but stand. You may not be able to pray, but stand. You may not be able to listen to any message. You will call on friends that will run away from you. You will call on family members that will run away from you, but stand. Stand. Stand is a threshing floor in the spirit. Is a white press in the spirit. The anointing is rising from that pain. The anointing, power in the spirit, unction, grace, 
a message, an apostolic and prophetic mantle will be your reward when you endure. I lift my head to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my voice to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. Listen. Many people will criticize what I have told you now. Many people will say, forget about him. But I stand before the God whom I serve. And I tell you, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare down upon the mountaintop. I've gone through my own. For many people, you are in your seasons. Others, yours is to come. This message is ministering to certain people right now. Some of you, it is memory because you are past that level. For some people, it's strange because it will not minister to you until that door. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Father, strength for the days ahead. Pray. Strength. Strength for the days ahead. Are you praying, Koinonia? Strength. Barada balada bala koto pros koto bariara bala raba. Shaga da bala da bos, shaga da bala da bos, shaga da 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 bos. Le na na maria na 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 na. Raba da da bala da bos, koto preka da bala da bos. Oh Lord, we draw strength from the throne. Shaka da bala da maria da bala da bos, shaka da preka da bala da bos. Le na na maria na mas ka maria da bala da da. Shaka bala da bala da da. Rekete te te. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord never told you, you will not go through storms. But he said, I will be with you. Hear this as a word of comfort. When all else fails, know that he is with you. I will be with you. Where you have no voice, call on him. Wait on him. Don't trivialize his presence. He's not one of many things. You will soon see that any other thing that is not him can truly not help you. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, hold my hands. Don't leave me alone. I know that there is a burden. I know that there is an anointing. But Lord, between where I am to the place of that anointing, hold my hands. That when I want to give up, let me feel your warmth. Lift your voice and pray. Ragada bala 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 bala
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and declare and tell the Lord my love for you is unbending. It doesn't matter what I go through. Lift your voice and pray. Solidify your commitment. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, oh God. I love you. Through the storms, I still love you. My family may be having challenges, but I love you. There are situations around my life and my family that I cannot explain, but I love you. I love you. When I have no words to say, know that I love you. When I have nowhere to run to, know that I love you. When I have no one to talk to, know that I love you. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us tonight? When Moses died, please look up everyone. When Moses died, the Bible tells us how that he told Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. And now Mo, uh, uh, Joshua had a responsibility to throw down Jericho. And he was afraid because the Bible tells us that Jericho was a mighty city. Do you know the fence of Jericho? According to scripture, five chariots could stand on the fence. How will you break through that fence? That is a challenge. But he said, I will show you something. Watch this. 5 verse 1 of Joshua. Mambro takasida balatabaya. Open our eyes, O oh God. And let men and women walk away from their chains forever. In the name of Jesus. Five verse one. And it came to pass, it will be a fast reading. When all the kings of the Amorites who were on the side of Jordan, westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Now watch this. They were about to challenge Jericho. And when the other kings heard of the mighty things that God did, the kings tried to decipher what is it about Israel that makes them always win battles. What is it that makes them, whether you have a greater armory than them, is insignificant. They will throw you down. There was a mystery of dominion they were working with. And God was about to introduce Joshua. Joshua was just a young ruler taking over from Moses. And this is what he told him. Let's see the mystery. Let's take chapter 5 verse 2. 5 verse 2. Are you there? Now let's look at it. It says, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Do what? He said, Make sharp knives. He's about to teach him how to continue in the steps of Moses. Make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Let's continue. 3. And Joshua made sharp knives and circumcised all the children at the heel of the foreskins. And then, and this is the reason why he circumcised them. All the people that came out of Egypt were males, even all the men of war. They died in the wilderness after they came out of Egypt. Five. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, when they came forth out of Egypt were not circumcised are you seeing that now all those who had been winning and making israel make progress 
it was because they were circumcised but he said these guys are not circumcised and if you don't circumcise them something dangerous is about to happen to you verse 6 it says for the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness and all of that and all of that let's go to verse 7 and their children whom he raised up in their stead them Joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way verse 8 watch this and it came to pass when they were done circumcising all the people they abode in their places watch this Joshua is afraid of conquering Jericho and the walls that are before him and God said no problem heaven wants to come into your affairs but you need to authorize them it says circumcise the people the moment the circumcision finished verse 9 let's see what happened and the Lord said to Joshua this day I have what rolled away the reproach of Egypt my goodness so all the while they were carrying the reproach because they were not circumcised he said the moment a circumcision a separation a cutting away happened he said this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you wherefore the name of the place to this day is called Gilgal go to verse 13 let's see something mysterious that happened verse 13 everyone look up and it came to pass listen Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes immediately after circumcision he saw a strange man who came and said I'm ready to partner with you you have invited the realm of the spirit into your affair that man had been there all the while but there was no access he said you need help you can't conquer Jericho by your strength the realm of the spirit wants to partner with you but the secret is the circumcision the moment it happened the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and he saw a man with a sword and he went to him and said are you for us or against us next verse and he said nay but I come I'm also a warrior but I fight in the spirit the same way you guys are warriors I am also a captain I lead a battalion I help men on earth who invite us to come you are seated on the throne and he said and Joshua fell on his face and did worship and he said unto him what saith my Lord to his servant next verse watch this and the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua lose thy shoe from off your foot from the place you stand this holy ground and Joshua did so next verse now Jericho was straightly short watch this let me just save our time. Are you noticing what is happening here? Immediately after the circumcision, he saw the captain. Then the captain started revealing to him the strategy. This is how you will take Jericho. Otherwise, they would have died there because physically speaking, Jericho was insurmountable. Now watch this. Your tight in the spirit is similar to this spiritual circumcision. Your tight is an authorization for the realm of the spirit to come into your affairs and partner with you this is the reason why even human beings for men men because men are the carriers of the seed men are instructed to be circumcised why not sir? how can a man come from heaven we believe children are the heritage of the lord but you will give birth to a man and he will still go through circumcision are you getting the point now because the moment circumcision happens the realm of the spirit comes come come watch this you are on your own minding your business trying to win the war of life by yourself and god is saying you are doing this thing sensually you are doing this thing carnally you never will be able to do it it says honor me with your tithe and the moment that happens there is already a spiritual arsenal that comes to work with you and that which you have becomes supernatural not just natural not just natural it becomes supernatural 
the reason why there is a crowd of people inside and outside look at this right to the road right everywhere let me tell you the reason why it is not just because this is a great ministry it is because we have beckoned on the assistance of the supernatural there are some people standing outside who are even shocked that they are here when you see them you imagine there is no amount of invitation you would have given them to come but for the realm of the spirit he said i am come as a captain in other words the same way you fight there are spiritual arsenals to wait in you have been trying to fight every battle in your life just by using physical arsenals and the lord is saying the earth is fighting you when you return my designated portion you authorize the realm of the spirit to begin to help you this ministry by the grace of god we are faithful never for any reason and by any means under the sun where we touch God's portion not out of fear but out of revelation my life as a person God is my witness that I honor him and that portion that belongs to him this is why I'm dangerously protected it's not about a man no 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 dangerously protected I share with you a simple but powerful mystery when pastor Jakes was sharing and he said they picked somebody from his position and makes him a deputy manager deputy manager with interviews on phone you went to school and you are intelligent is that how it is done let me tell you the blessing breaks the rules for you it breaks the rules for you yes when men say it cannot be done it breaks the rules the problem is that we are too carnal we have intellectualized life life is spiritual say it after me one more time shout it like you believe it life is spiritual all that you see is not all that there is those who are controlling this world are those who have an advantage of the spirit You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. Tonight God is asking you, are you ready to stop struggling in life? Let me tell you, struggling is a cause. If you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle, I am telling you now, struggling is a cause it's a cause from the pit of hell you will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money because money is not missing you were never supposed to look for it hallelujah you will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things trying to look for earthly relevance there are people who want to build a house but they want to build it physically by putting blocks you will die trying to build that house because there is a spiritual dimension to everything give us James chapter 2 verse 26 I hope we'll be able to find it I'm reserving it for next week by the way next week Friday here is going to be a powerful vigil hallelujah yes next week is going to be a vigil it's going to be a time of prayer and worship we're inviting guests from all over now watch this the Lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life I shared it in Abuja I was reserving it to start the teaching next week but your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's let's touch it a bit Paul watch this oh, sorry James the apostle James was teaching on faith and works corresponding action is that true and while he was teaching on faith and works he just feared off and brought a powerful principle in an attempt to explain faith and work he, comp he, he compares it with something he says for as the body without what a spirit now all of you watch this guy 
the only reason that I can interact with him is because there is a spirit. Is that true? If the spirit leaves this body, what happens? I will reject the body. All of you will reject the body. Are you getting me? And we will have to bury him because it is a body. Though complete, it has no spirit. Are you getting me? Now, I want you, media, please keep it there. Keep it there so that we'll... I want you to remove the word as and just read just the first line to the comma. Are you ready? One to read. One more time. One more time. For the body without the spirit is dead. It is said for the body of man. For any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it, it is dead. For any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead. For any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body. It says for a body without a spirit. So the nation of Israel was like a body without a spirit. And he said Joshua you will lose. You need the spirit component. And circumcision authorized the spirit. When the realm of the spirit came they said let's go. We can take Jericho. And with one shout. This was what David knew. That as big as Goliath was, he was a body without a spirit. The other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm. Ah, Goliath was shouting and David looked at him. He said, I see a body, but there is no covenant, no spirit. What is the force in the spirit backing you? And Goliath said, am I a dog? Even if you fight me, honor me. And David said, you are joking. You don't know who is talking. I'm not alone. I, I, you are an uncircumcised. See the word again. See the word again. You are an uncircumcised. I would have been afraid of you. I would have considered your threat if you were circumcised. Where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit? And he said, I'm circumcised. I may be weak, but there is a government that backs me. When you get this key, my brother, you will run as if Satan does not exist. I promise you. I promise you. This, you can jump around for deliverance. You can hop from everywhere. But the body without a spirit is dead. So your boss in the office knows this. And there is a spirit that backs his chair. You just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong shall do experience rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder. How many people, listen, I have given up on trying to do things by my strength because I know I'm wasting my time, the body. In the same way, the next time somebody stands and threatens you, that is a body without a spirit. See, no matter what talk people talk, I only consider you if you are connected spiritually are you getting what I'm saying I will deal with you the body without the spirit is dead I will make sure you leave this job the body without the spirit is dead you only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three dimensional realm because there is an assistance whether demonic or whatever are you getting me circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man 
you will get up and jump and shout. Tonight, all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery, crying and asking heaven and say, Lord, behold the sick people. And already in this place, there are more angels. The arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know. That's always what happens. Whenever you see me come to sit down, I smile around the stage. I would have died of hypertension if I'm responsible for your healing. But we have made arrangement already. We are covered. Oh yes, absolutely. We are covered. Heaven is jealous. Jealous to protect his own. Because God's designated portion. Listen. When you steal your tithe, you have not only destroyed your destiny, you have stolen from your children. Every time you don't tithe, just know that your firstborn is in trouble. If you don't do it again, you are affecting your children. Because he said, I will pour you a blessing, you will not have room. In other words, no matter how greedy you are, your lifetime cannot exhaust it. So when you steal, you have endangered the destiny of your children. God's portion. If anyone ever told you tithing is all about money, that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong. Tithing has nothing to do with money. It's the law of open heavens. Let me surprise you. If your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000, you are operating under a closed heaven. Don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million, the heavens is open. It is called due process. I'll teach you next week. There is a protocol to spiritual things. Are you getting my point? Tithing is what opens your heavens. And then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper. If you like, carry one billion. Give charity organization. Give for the building of church. If you are not a tither, I guarantee you, the Bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron. All of them are conductors of heat. Get set for heat in your life. When the heaven is open, if, not, if for nothing we know there is ventilation, fresh air, the wind comes. But when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron, many of us here, no matter what prayer happens in this, that's why we took the communion. The devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised. The devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. Even Jesus Christ acknowledged them. That's why he said he is the head of principalities. It destroys men's lives on legal basis. This earth is too wicked for you to allow chance. No. I pray for people all the time. People with cancers, HIV, tuberculosis, communicable diseases. Imagine if I refuse to be faithful. I would die like a chicken. Because most times I lay hands on people. And there are medical doctors here. They know that some of these things are physically not healthy. But I'm circumcised. My goodness. You invoke my name in a shrine. Both the invoker, the invokee, and the ordinance, it, they will burn to ashes. Ashes. No matter how mad a man is, he doesn't enter fire by mistake. He can cross the road and you say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, he fears off. When heaven backs you, let me tell you, your life becomes a wonder even to you. This ministry is a wonder to everyone. Not just because we are so smart. We are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit. Because by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Cry out, God, you 
but mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty in this place. 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 You are mighty in my life. 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister. You are mighty in this place. Baba Katala Baba. Ay 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 ay. They that are with us are greater. Greater, greater, mantos kalabandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Rababa cinema na 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 na. Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy. Where I've allowed the devourer, I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside. Lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision. Listen, 
I give you an assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this if you take what I've shared tonight for many of you this is your secret is your password to a mysterious level of lifting a level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night. Lift your voice. It's the seventh month. The gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer. Because I see the angels of the Lord already moving. Let me just add one more prayer. Listen. I want you to pray. Listen. There are giants on every mountain. Every one of us is holding a prayer request. Because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go. But tonight, I want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say, I must go tonight. Lift your voice. Inside and outside. Cry. I must walk away. Oh, that carrying out disease must die today. That cancer must live today. That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 o
Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person, are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow we just move and we don't stop so you have one minute while you are praying in tongues just write your prayer request very quickly so that when it's time to pass it you just pass it very fast make sure you don't keep silent Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit. Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to begin to minister to us while I prayed for this in the course of the week again and again I kept seeing please pay attention can I have strings strings, 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 strings. hallelujah I kept seeing again and again spirits watch this spirits leeching onto people this is what I kept seeing like a man sitting on a man's shoulder I saw this over many people and I said Lord what is the meaning of this and the Lord began to to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families and the Lord said when I come up he said the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers dislodge those powers I saw them like a man like a child will sit down on the shoulder of another bringing a resistance to your destiny and I'm about to pray for you right now there are so many people under the sound of my voice so many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands, everyone. Inside and outside. 
there will be such mighty deliverances outside by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine. But then that migraine you think is just sickness. We are about to make a shout, brothers and sisters. This shout is like the sling of David. It looks ordinary, but there is a circumcision upon it. It's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm. It's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men. It's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic. It's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now. There will be mighty deliverances. Mighty deliverances. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for us. And then at the count of three, we are going to shout that name, Jesus. My goodness. I sense the anointing of the Spirit. Help me. The power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way. And you will see this spirit. Some of you are already feeling uncomfortable. It's the power of God. Especially many outside. There will be mighty deliverances. Lift your hands now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of your son, I pray right now. And I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That the fire of the spirit... Oh, restrain not your hand, oh mighty one. We pray that you arise as a man of war. There are destinies at the mercy of your touch. I pray that by this shout, oh God, there be a visitation. That by this shout, oh God, everyone here, under any spirit, help them please. Help them. Bring them out. Everyone here, under any influence, as we shout, let fire catch them and visit their foundations. And I command every power that at this shout, you will let God's people go inside and outside. One, two, three. Shout that name. I command witchcraft, powers of darkness, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside, inside and outside, inside and outside, the fire of God is falling on people, falling on people. I cause witchcraft, I cause witchcraft, I cause witchcraft, I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! Oh, yes. That's fire. That's fire. That's fire. Of the Holy Ghost. It's Outside. 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 Mighty deliverances. By the power of the Holy Ghost. You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies. Ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire 
Oh God, locate them right now, right now, right now. I cross that spirit. I cross that spirit. Ladies, ladies, a miracle is happening, sister. I cost those 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 I cost I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now, as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person right now wherever that person is in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus inside and outside the power of God comes upon that person Hallelujah. 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 Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now God is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of Jesus, families, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Father, any family under the yoke of bondage, as they shout this name, let there be a visitation. One, two, three. Jesus! Families, be free now. Be free now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. 
and ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as I begin to speak the wind I see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh God visit them right now in the name of Jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one, two, three Jesus spells spells be broken be broken be broken be broken be broken marital spells outside Outside, be broken, be broken. There he is, 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 there he Hallelujah. 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 I'm hearing a name, Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Suta. Tegota. Teporosta. Bakata. Sisosa. Bakata. Garos. Sisoketi. Ebrakata. Tesu. Tesu. Bakata. Gakaro. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel. The Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't. This place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas. Where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not based in Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying. She's Where is she? Mina, Niger State. She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord sets you free. Madam, look at me. 
Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? I don't know. Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, sir. It's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family. Sir. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are Dorcas. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you, yourself, otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship. But hold my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring rest to this lady. Bring rest to her in the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman that had a miscarriage? There is a woman that had a miscarriage. And the Lord is asking me to minister to her. We may not be able to minister to everybody, but there is, there is someone. Please make sure you don't sit back. The Lord is ministering to me about that person. So that we'll just, we'll just pray for her. Dogara. Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You? Your name is Dogara. Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home in Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never. If they are permitting anything, please and please. Them out of well, we're about to pray, please. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident in the name of Jesus. It will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying. I should tell you, He's going to begin to hold your hands and that He will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life. And he's bringing joy to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come. There's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family. Because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. You're, it's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Yes, huh? yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage. Yes, sir. Because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes. Uh, yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying, and saying, pray for me. Okay. You understand? Yes, it sir. takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He will give birth to a baby boy. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage. Again, in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now. Release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? Yes. We have to pray because... And I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics, attacking your academics very seriously, so that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing, ah, huh? and then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel's, and I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I do. I curse that spirit. 
you must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of God is against you in the name of Jesus Christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ may they experience I curse that spirit let her go let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ who were brought out here under the anointing I want, to, I want to speak to them now don't worry everyone out here I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you you know my voice I represent the most high at the count of three leave them and go right now one two go 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 out of them out out of them out now never to return at your Lord live your life Restoration of virtue, of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me. Rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You. This lady looking at me. You. Come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says I should tell you he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a bola. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's rolling away the reproach from your life. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and let's release miracle job. If you don't believe in it, put down your hand. I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus. I break your covenant. I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven and I curse you by my office in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cost that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we're playing games here. 
I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical, yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare. Everyone called jobless here. By the favor of God. I terminate joblessness right now. By the favor of God. I terminate joblessness right now. Anyone who has applied for any job. I compel them to call you. I compel them to call your loved ones. I compel them to favor you. here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, paining you and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife are you seeing that is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it would do to someone's destiny i say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that god is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of god in our churches and stop playing games with god because god's idea is not just for one platform hallelujah swollen legs no 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 don't, you don't you don't have to madam i see you too your legs for how long What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. 
Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent baby. Lord, have mercy on this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick. Then we let them come out. I'm just going to switch to special cases. Leg. Your leg. All of you. Who had a dream? In a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to follow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You in prayed when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once. But truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God. And God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in this season. For me to stand or to walk, almost two years is broken for me. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? I, I can't stand like this. Some people are standing now. For me to stand still, You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me. Yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's it's you cut it? it huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out came out. the other This thigh. is the person I'm talking about. And it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to his present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, ah, sir. Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hand. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cast this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I do. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have nail pains. Since I, yeah, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, so I can't you... walk. since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now, I can't walk. I can walk and be feeling sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen. What about five years? Five years? Where is, which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand? I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two months now. I started the leg. Two, two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? And leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs yes. swollen. Beat me oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was found. Eh? Nothing was found. Nothing is wrong. 
Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus. You can't remain in her. The swollen leg, I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. trusting God for healings and miracles I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place it is not a thing of pride to have so many look at literally maybe hundreds of people right outside there is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people it's not God's idea to have one superstar it's just that many people especially men of God are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I'll be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God.
doesn't matter what is wrong with you. Just a laying on of hands. The anointing of the spirit is like a drug. The moment it enters your body, it begins to work. And it brings you healing. You will notice that some people are standing for healing. But as soon as hands are laid on them, devils are coming out. Because they are the causes of these infirmities. This place a place of healing and miracles. Look at the condition of this brother. The legs. Look at me. Leave him. Move your hand. Look at me. Have you tried walking before? Huh? Lift your leg. Try it. Lift it. Lift the other one. Lift it. Lift it. Stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come, come, come. Just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come, come, come. Come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. Look at on this. your throne. Walking. 
Jesus, Jesus. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. Yeah. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. My heart will sing. Please, those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stretch your hands as I pray on this. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. Father, 
I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God, doors that are yet to be opened, be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let every turn. Lord, where people said, there's no way. My Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies we are bound in great ways, Lord, unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, people that are insane, you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus. We pray for contract that long delayed. Lord, we pray that, Lord, will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a shield of protection over your saints, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit. Let the fire of God call come on cold altars in the name of Jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us Lord we give you praise blessed father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of Jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by the anointing. It's not by English. Burdens are destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. This last segment, you've heard me say it again. This is the most powerful and most impactful segment. If you're not a man of the spirit, you may not understand what I'm saying. Please help them. This is the most powerful of this segment right now. Before we go into this where I begin to prophesy, there are two dimensions to prophecy. There is the revelatory dimension of prophecy. That dimension of prophecy gives you direction. But the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension. That's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word. Never joke with the power of prophecy. That's the power that created the heavens and the earth. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Before we do that very quickly, everyone inside and outside, there are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I want to commit my life to the Lord. I've seen the miracles. I've seen the signs and wonders, but my way is not right with the Lord. You know that right now, as you're standing here, if the trumpet sounds, you're not making heaven. You know it right now. Having a Christian name is not the same as having a relationship with Jesus. There are some you've given your heart to the Lord at one time. Please help the, uh, those under the anointing. I tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now. I sense a heavy anointing on me already. That's why I'm doing this very quickly. Now if you are here, please don't delay us. You are saying I want to return home. For whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of God and you are saying Lord I have heard your word and I'm not ashamed to make Jesus my Lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now I'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. hallelujah hallelujah keep coming
coming. God bless you. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. Sansa di Bucci. Sansa di Bucci. Sansa di Bucci. We give you the praise. Sansa di Bucci. Sit back there when you hear the voice of the Lord. I appreciate every one of you for coming out. This is the way to the cross. Listen, no matter what you achieve in life, if your eternal destiny is not secured, it says, This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. But he said, this life is in his son. Until you have the son, you do not have that life. Lift your right hand. Forget about who is looking at you. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things it go and the rest ah huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night i make jesus lord of my life i repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit. I am born again. I'm a child of God. From today, the power of sin, the power of the flesh is broken over me. My past is gone and it's over forever. I am a new creation in Christ. In the name of Jesus, the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of jesus i receive of your life in jesus name i pray now i stretch my hands over you and i declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of jesus i declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life i release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of jesus it is wiped away i set you free i break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah i want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session i want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentlemen now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the Bible says, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Hallelujah. There is a mystery with the seventh month. It's the time where God perfects all things. As I prophesy to you, please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen. 
Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Don't, don't mind all that nonsense. One way to conquer Satan is to ignore him. All of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses. By the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things, you will waste your time. I know you are trying as ushers, just stand around. Satan does not have authority. I want you to know that there is an anointing. Manifestations are already signs that his power is broken. But Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh. So he begins to act around your mind to distract you. When you ignore Satan, is one way of conquering him. It does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense. Are you getting my point? So this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. I prophesied as I was commanded. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. Seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year. An anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every student here. Oh, for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding. I'm praying for you. Some of you, listen, as I pray now, some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head. It's an impartation of knowledge. Right now, oh God, I release an anointing to change the story of students. At the count of three, let it fall right now. One, two, three, take it, take it, take it, take it now, take it now. That anointing, receive it for exploits. Shakatatata, inside and outside. Take it for exploits, exploits, exploits. Hallelujah. Everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy. I command stagnation to end now. 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 My goodness, something is happening to your destiny. Every night season in your life, every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day I speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor I don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of God is upon a man 
your looks, your background, your qualifications no longer matter. Let an anointing of favor right now. I see at least 100 people, 100 people like fire, 100 people right now. Receive it, receive it. Favor, 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 favor upon your life. Favor. Paratatatabakata. Shakata lakata. Bratakata. Favor. 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 Parekete. Embratata. Lakata. I prophesy by an apostolic anointing. Favor. 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 Everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level. I don't care where they are, but I sound an alarm in the spirit. That in this month we're entering called August. May that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level. Shekete. Receive the keys of the next level. The mysteries of the next level. Every spiritual blindness. Shababa. Things happen around you you cannot see. Lord of spiritual vision I pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as I'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the Holy Ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now. Be free from it right now. Be free from it right now. Hallelujah. There are many of us here. Dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction. But for many of us, our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there. The Bible says they will dream dreams. It says they will see visions. Shakataba, lift your hands. There will be an, a restoration anointing right now. I just want you to shout, I receive. Listen, many things will happen to you. Many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where God will start showing you the blueprint for the next level. Right now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three as you shout, I receive. Let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams Hallelujah. It says, what do you have in your house? And she said, nothing except a jar of oil. I want to prophesy upon your gift. It's one thing to be gifted, but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed. There are many of you, the gift you have can bring bread to your table, but nobody is seeing it. Is one thing to be gifted, is one thing to be skilled, but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed. Thou anointed my head with oil, and it makes my cup to overflow. I prophesy to you 
whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light I pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine, arise and shine. lift your hands one last prayer listen I want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing Word of knowledge, gift of prophecy, 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 prophecy. I activate the prophetic. I open your eyes. Spiritual gifts, endowments of the spirit. I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow I prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise
Father, we give you all the praise. I assure you, you will know that this miracle service was unusual. You will know. Many of you, right from this night, tomorrow will not reach you. Start having your testimonies. Right from this night. Right from this night. Favor, alerts, calls, I mean connections, mysterious happenings. I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny. And in the name of Jesus, I command that every gate that has been closed, the Bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate. Your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Let everything in your life start working for you. I command the earth to work for you. I command the wind to work for you. I command the stars to work for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for Koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.